All right, so welcome back to Night Hacking. This is part three in MoMA, and we are going to play around with the Raspberry Pi. So quick introduction for folks new to the stream. Uh, the way this works is go to nighthacking.com, watch our live streams, or sign up for one of the events in person. And you can also watch recordings on the Java YouTube channel. And today we have Parin Martin, who did some really cool um, demonstrations of WebView and JavaFX demos and their their future bicycle tour presentation. Yep. We, we saw a preview of something which which might actually might happen. Actually happen. <laughs> but the only way you're going to find those, see those, is if you go back and watch the recorded streams yeah. on the nighthacking.com yeah. website. Exactly. All right. And then now we are going to play around with this guy. Well, this guy's relative. I have to unplug him to hold him up to the camera. All right. We'll, 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 we'll live dangerously here. When you have everything set up, that's when you should unplug it, right? We did that once. Everything was working. Then we decided to reboot the computer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I decided to reboot the computer. <laughs> and nothing ever worked again. Nope. So yeah, good luck. All right, so here is a Raspberry Pi in a, a very stylish, transparent case that was custom laser cut by one of the guys on the DevOps crew. Ooh. So this is, this is another you had to be there in person to to get it. Um, and for those of you who don't know much about the Raspberry Pi hardware, well, I, I, should, I should probably just, I, I, actually, I've been working on um, my slides for, for JFocus, and they, they actually describe this stuff better than I can. Ooh. So you can just put them up there, and we can sit back and relax for a while. Exactly. Nice. Hopefully. <laughs> well, you, guys, you guys are the, the test bed for stuff which I'm trying out. And first we get the nice picture in picture, picture in picture in picture. Okay, here's my slides. Are they showing up somewhat? Okay, now they're showing up in a window. And there is a Raspberry Pi. That's how Raspberry Pis are actually created. <laughs> you take a little coffee, you take a little raspberry, and you sprinkle some magic. Sprinkle, yeah. sprinkle some magic. So this guy has on him, these are all the, the jacks listed, but he has an audio jack, audio out, composite, Comp composite video to hook it up to a TV or HDMI, and the HDMI supports full 1920 by 1080. The hard drive is an SD card, so you can have up to 32 gigabytes, but four gigabytes is enough to run the basic Linux distribution. It's powered off USB, recommended to have 700 milliamps, but we're gonna we're gonna live on the edge and run it on 500 because I don't have that many USB ports on my computer. USB ports only supply, supply 500 milliamps each, so you have to use a Y cable if you want to get enough power for a Pi off your laptop. Most cell phone chargers are quite good enough for the job, though. Uh, Ethernet for network connectivity, a couple USB guys. Am I showing up on camera? Yeah. And there's quite a lot of stuff on the board. So you have GPIO pins you could use to control servos or motors. Um, you have some, I don't even know what these guys are, are for, but um, whatchamacallit, JTAG headers? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Actually, on my board, they don't even have headers. So they're just places you could solder your own headers to. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so nobody really uses those. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason you have yours in a case. <laughs> speaking, speaking of things nobody use, there's... Any, anybody have a Pi? No? No? Okay, there's a couple, there's a couple um, extra slots on top here. And I, I have them highlighted on the screen back there. And so the question is, what are, what are those for? 
do you what, know? What do you guys, or, what do you guys think they're for? Magic. <laughs> Adding, Magic, uh, yes. Connecting that's, it that's to, to the bike. That's the most descriptive <laughs> answer. Adding some kind of display, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. Display. Any other ideas? No, no. So, so actually, one is one is a camera port, mm -hmm. and the other one is a display port. Mm -hmm. So I get a sticker. Well, almost, but <laughs> because currently neither of them are actually supported. So, <laughs> so I will get the sticker in the future. <laughs> so you owe me a sticker. Yeah. So I guess I guess the deal is the um, they <coughs> to to use either port, you have to have access to some of the GPU code that Broadcom, which makes the chip, would have to do proprietary stuff with, and they haven't released an official Raspberry Pi camera or display that works with the ports yet. So, they're entirely useless. <laughs> they look kind of cool, I mean, Yeah, no, what, what somebody asked me once what those ports were for, and I didn't know, but my answer was probably about as good as it gets, because they're really not good for anything. <laughs> Okay, so that's the Raspberry Pi, and this is incredibly inexpensive. Raspberry Pis are, you know, 35 USD. So, was that in Swedish crowns? Hmm. Like 200? 30 is 200, yeah. right? 200. 200. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like probably, yeah. So, so that's, like, that's like the cost of like a lunch here. Repairs. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, maybe I've been hanging out in tourist traps. <laughs> that must be the problem. Yeah, no, or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a very inexpensive device, and um, it's great for experimenting because you can actually you can run Java on it. So, I I have full instructions for how to set up your own Pi on my blog. The URL is back there, nicely obscured by my head. <laughs> But um, if you go to stevonjava.com, which is my blog, you'll, you'll find it. It's one of the more recent entries. And it's, it's really easy. So, step one, install Linux. There's a nice distribution that comes, and then you install and burn it onto your SD card from someone as standard images, and you're good to go. I mean, you know, slightly more complicated than that, but not too bad. Step two, download the Java EA and copy it over to your SD card. So um, as of December, there's now a Java 8 ARM EA that's available for download on the Oracle website. And it supports, well, Raspberry Pi and JavaFX. So we could, we could, we could try running your demo sure. on the Raspberry yeah, Pi. Cool. I would love that. Actually, let's, let's do that. Sure. Okay. And it's Good. funny because this is so much more powerful than the computers we had back then. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> in, in, in this format, which is interesting. Here, pop it on a jar file. Sure. Pop your jar file on the USB <laughs> stick. And we'll give it a try. And um, you can deploy, well, that's what we're going to do. Deploy and run JavaFX apps on this, this, little, this little guy. Okay, so that's, that's how to set up the Pi. And uh, there's a little bit of info I had about JavaFX, like how to get JavaFX, but you, we talked about this. Java 7 comes with JavaFX now. Yep. And then how to develop JavaFX, and you saw these guys using NetBeans? Well, both NetBeans and Eclipse. Actually. And Eclipse, OK, yeah. yeah. So, and you can use IntelliJ. You can use any, any J developer fans? <laughs> OK, we'll, 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 we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Add some applause, like, yay. <laughs> yeah. And you can build applications visually, which um, you guys showed that as well. Yeah. OK. But I think showing cool demos, this is actually um, mm. one of the demos we did at DevOx for um, the signage. So we had this animation running at full 1920 by 1080 with flying ships and the latest information pulled down off a um, REST API at, the, at each of the rooms, in front of each of the rooms, so you knew what session was going on at DevOx. And this was all run off Raspberry Pis, hooked up to TVs. So there's and lots, of, and lots of cool stuff. And it was quite advanced. It looked really good. Yeah. I mean, with the 
cool perspective and things moving back and forth. You wouldn't guess that was run of a computer this big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. Okay, so we're we're gonna see if we can get this guy up, up and running. Um, so HDMI out, sure, why not? Power, so I not recommended at home, but I'm powering it off a 500 milliamp USB socket. Hopefully that demo doesn't. Um, <laughs> you never know. Doesn't tax <laughs> this poor little processor. And you can see the status lights blinking here. So one's kind of power, one is activity on the SD card, and then three for network random things. Just like when you plug into a um, socket on a computer. And if we're lucky, let's see if we're lucky. Oh wow, it actually, it, it came back up. We've got high output. Not bad. Okay, so you can actually you can actually see it's actually booting. This is the the Pi booting up, just like a normal Linux machine. We can log into it. Um, very secure login here. Can anyone anyone want to take a venture or guess at what the Oh, so um, when you're using the Pi and you're using a keyboard, it helps to... <laughs> that was a durability test. <laughs> it helps to actually plug in your USB device. Okay, so user ID is Pi. Pi. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's cute. Okay, I know what's happening. <laughs> So um, we have a, a, a cute little wireless capture card here, a Teradek. And um, apparently, there's about a 10 second delay. <laughs> <laughs> so it works just a little slowly. There we go. So are we able to find the? Oh, you're putting you're putting you're putting together a jar file as we speak. All right, while he's doing that, I can show you some other <coughs> Pi demos which I've been playing with at the other user groups. Okay, so what do we got here? Java forum. You want to see what the Java forum guys? What we did at Java forum for some live coding. So the way you, you run Pi applications is um, the Java command. And I don't have it in my path, but it's under, on this machine, it's under opt, um, I think it's JDK 1.8. Wait for 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, that is really painful. <laughs> Yeah, okay, JDK 1.8.0, bin Java. You need to run it as root because it uses the um, OpenGL EGL pipeline. So I'm just going to put sudo at the beginning so it runs as root. And then you have to pass in a flag for what the platform it's running on. Right now the only supported platform is, like I mentioned, EGL. It doesn't support... Um, X windows or other ways of writing it, so it takes over the whole frame buffer. But, oh shoot, that's really bad. I didn't click left far enough, so sudo end up in the middle of my command. <laughs> <laughs> but what you need to add to the commands is, um, what was control C and do again? Sudo opt JD. JDK Shift JavaFX. You have to add JavaFX dot platform equals EGLFB. 
and that'll run it in the um, OpenGL pipeline. And finally, give it your jar, dash jar, and um, we'll run the uh, close Java forum test. Okay. So now I got to get the cursor back and fix the. Um, Opt JDK one eight. See, I'm I'm killing time for you guys to catch up with the jar file. <laughs> oh, it's going to be like half an hour. So, don't worry, I've got your back. <laughs> So, so this, this is a good exercise. Like this would be fun, like doing a coding contest where your screen is 10 seconds delayed from. <laughs> <laughs> it would be it would be a, a good challenge for folks to see like how how good of a hacker you really are. So how's it going? Not not so good. <laughs> not good. so good. Yeah, I'm I'm failing miserably here. <laughs> But this is, um, you have installed Java applications onto this before. Mm -hmm. how, can you talk a bit about how to do that? Or is that something you're going no, to do that's about a, later on? No, that's a trade secret. All right. OK. So you have to buy them from you. <laughs> yeah, no, so there's two ways you can get stuff onto the Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. One is you can use a USB stick, like what we're playing with now. The other one is you can um, hook up a network connection. And then you use secure copy or um, um, secure FTP to move files over. All right, that command looks pretty good. Let's try running it. And actually, something else you can do. This is probably where I should have started with this, rather than trying to do this on the terminal. You can um, hook up SSH to a window on your desktop computer and then type the commands in um, a terminal. And that way I wouldn't have any delay. <laughs> okay, so there you can see OpenGL pipeline startup. Oh. Welcome to Java Forum Gothenburg. And it was so fast, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see how it just, <clears throat> and there it is. Yeah, it was. Like 10 it minutes, was, wow. It was great. No, but that's cool. I'm not gonna. <laughs> All right, so, so just, to, just to prove how much fun this is, do I have a volunteer for somebody who wants to try to click the button <laughs> with a 10 second delay on a trackpad? Oh, we have a volunteer here, uh, thank yay. you. Okay. <laughs> See, just, you know, just aim for the button. Let's go. <laughs> um. I'm going to get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I tried to cheat. I tried to press enter, but. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, there oh, there it is. Oh, I was ooh. right on spot. Pretty good. I didn't click, though. So, oh, there it is. Oh, okay. You did it. You did, I it. did it. Yeah. So, so actually, that, that button. Sticker for me? Yeah, sticker for you. <laughs> that button was wired up to exit the application because one of the questions I got in Gothenburg was how do you quit out of a JavaFX application? Control C doesn't work because JavaFX picks up all the keystrokes in your application, and you wouldn't you wouldn't want someone to accidentally hit Control C and like you know exit out of your fancy GUI application. But what you can do is either put a menu or a button or something in your application to quit and wire it up to wire it. How do how do you quit in JavaFX? You just quit. Oh, you mean uh, in the code? Yeah, in the code. Application dot code. terminate. Something I have auto complete. I don't have to think. <laughs> <laughs> but it's application dot exit oh, exit exit. Right. Yeah. Sticker no. No, not for that time. <laughs> no, but it's uh, yeah. And the other way you can exit is you can actually kill the process from another, you know, terminal window. All right. Speaking of another terminal window, I'm going to hook up an Ethernet connection to this so we can terminal into it and then show you guys how to use secure FTP. An SSH. All right, let's see what our 
IP addresses. So it's a full Linux distribution. You can use your favorite commands like ifconfig. Okay, internet address is 10.0.1.7. Got my desktop again. SSH. Yep. Oh, question. Yeah, so um, ask the question. I'll repeat it for the stream since right. the, I'm you. using this mic Could on the stream. Samba share or okay, so question is if you can open up a Samba share on the Pi to, I guess, move files. Yeah. And yeah, you, that's one way you could do it. Um, FTP is probably easier than setting up Samba, especially since I'm on Mac. But yeah. Yeah, Samba would work. It's not a limitation, though. No, no, you can, you can absolutely do that. Cool. <coughs> oh, and I forgot the number. Does anyone remember the number I said before? No, no, no winners. Oh, wait, wait, sticker, here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try again. I got it later. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I hope that I hope they have a good insurance policy. <laughs> Ten zero one seven. <laughs> All right, so now we got our SSH. We're going to say yes to the um, <laughs> fingerprint. Type it in. All right, and now we actually now we can actually work on the Pi reasonably. <laughs> Okay, so how, how are we doing that jar file? Uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's having a bit, he, he's having some uh, platform problems here. Or it must be the, that USB stick I gave you was yeah. defective. It needs to be reformatted. To, to sure. <laughs> <laughs> had a virus on it. Yeah, it said like, do you want to run this? And he was like, yeah, sure. Always, yes. I can ask a question in the meantime. Uh, the I.O. ports, uh, what are they? For example, I have used uh, Arduino uh, before, but uh, what can you do with the Raspberry Pi? Um, for I.O., like the GPIO pins? For example, uh, connecting external sensors and reading the voltage to uh, figure out the distance to see. Okay, so question is what you can do with um, I.O. with the Raspberry Pi? And so I believe if you want to use sensors or hook up something external, there's two options for how you would configure it. One is you can use the GPIO pins, which are on the board here. And you can, you know, hook up a connector to a sensor <coughs> or have it. So I think you can read the voltages or you can um, set the voltage. You can um, oscillate the voltage on those pins to either control something or um, get sensor input back in. And there's a... Java library somebody wrote for accessing those, which um, Jonathan Giles is, is going to help me out. But on a previous stream, I mentioned the name of the, the library since he, he typed it into chat for my benefit. Um, the other option is you can also hook up sensors and devices over USB. And since it's a full Linux distribution, you can get access to USB devices and install drivers for you know, different devices if they have support. Or, well, write your own device driver. <laughs> but that's another way you can get access to um, an external device that's as complicated as you you can get. So, does that answer your question? More or less, but I have heard people still using the Arduino, so I wonder what is the benefit, uh, what, what, why the Raspberry Pi could be worse. Yeah, so the question was, Oh, so thanks, Jonathan. The library is Pi4J. So you can use Pi4J to access the GPIO pins. And, um, oh. I'm done. Excellent. Well, we sticker? won't. <laughs> you already have a sticker. This is quick. But, so but I, I think there might be a sticker on the floor over there, which is unclaimed. But that's his sticker. <laughs> no, he's got Stickers. a sticker. He has a sticker, but how about the guy who got the sticker in the head? <laughs> he deserves a sticker. No, no, yeah, that's right. You, that's your sticker. <laughs>
I'll, I'll toss you another one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> for, for everyone else nearby you, because I'll never hit you. <laughs> but I mean, the IO pins on the, on the Pi should be at least as good as those on Arduino, I guess. It's pretty much the same Yeah, thing. so I think part of the reason people use Arduino, well, first it, it came out sooner, and um, it's a lower power processor, so it's technically cheaper to like mass produce. But the other thing is there's lots of um, expansion boards yeah. and um, you know existing modules people have written for the Arduino. So what a lot of people do is they'll use Arduinos to interface to hardware, but they'll still connect it to a Raspberry Pi. That's actually what they did for DevOps. They had thumbs up, thumbs down monitors. And they had Arduino to control some of the you know, lights blinking on the signage and then to read the RFID. But then they had the Pi actually transmitting data and talking to the REST interface. Although they told me that they would probably just do the whole thing in Raspberry Pi next time. Because you, if you write a complicated application with um, Arduino, it's, it's mostly single threaded and you use the funky processing library. So it's hard. You get weird, I, I guess you can code around this, but you can sometimes get weird behavior where it's doing something so it ignores other inputs and it, yeah. They had some issues. That's how it is. Okay, so there also was a question on the stream about LCD support for the Pi. And there's actually one company in Israel called Chalkboard Electronics, which makes an LCD panel that works with the Pi. Like a touch display, right? Yeah, like a touch yeah, display. That's cool. So, so guess how they did it? Because I, I mentioned that the, the actual display port is broken on the Pi. They, um, well, they use... Um, Anyone want to take a guess? This is, this is a, um, sticker, a sticker worthy guess, <laughs> guess opportunity. Which are uh, the GPIO pins? Yeah. Close, close, but, but not quite. Don't use the HDMI outputs or no? All right, all right, so that's part of it, but you already got a sticker, so you can yep. be quiet now. And the USB port. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know, that's right. <laughs> Save them for. So they, they hook up to the HDMI port and the USB port and. <clears throat> so I haven't, this is on my to-do list for um, my next train ride, but actually I have one of these just sitting around. <laughs> surprise. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and um, well, let me get back on camera. Ah, so this, this is actually what the little display looks like. Wow. And it's a little touchscreen display. Comes with a, um, well, it looks exactly like, you know, the front side of a tablet. <laughs> <laughs> with all the little fragile components inside of here. And it has a little daughter board. This is really what Chalkboard Electronics put together was a daughter board, um, which hooks up to the LCD panel via these. And then HDMI here and USB here and auxiliary power for the display here. So you get enough power to run the display, and you get your touch over USB, and you get HDMI um, for the you know, pixels. What, what are these? Uh, this is, light I, I think this is a light sensor. Yeah, cool. And you can actually, you can see on the front of the display here, they have cutouts. Where is it? Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. Little cutouts for camera <laughs> <laughs> and light sensor. Cool. Okay. So this was, this was clearly designed for a tablet, and they just... Got rid of the it, tablet. <laughs> made use of it for the yeah, cool. Okay, so if someone wants to play around with this later, take a look at it. At some point, I actually have to sit down and make that work with Java. Okay, so speaking of making things work with Java, um, you guys have something for me. Sure. Luga Amiga. Amiga. Sure. Amiga. And there's a dist folder. And there's Amiga.jar. Sure. That look good. Okay, and we're going to use um, Cyberduck to copy stuff over to the Pi. 
No. Okay. <laughs> uh, there we go. We're back. Open a connection to 10, 0, <coughs> 1, 7. Thanks. 1, 7. Now I know Quick Connect is not going to work because it doesn't let me select the protocol. Secure FTP. Username is pi. Very secure password. Anyone want to guess? Password. No. Blueberry. What? Blueberry. Close. Very Blueberry. close. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh. That man gets a sticker. <laughs> sticker. That's the default <laughs> password for the Raspberry Pi distribution when you um, grab it from the foundation. <laughs> Blueberry was a really good guess. <laughs> I mean, that was so close. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're thinking too hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we got the Amiga jar file, and let's try running it. Java, well, wow, this is much better. Um, oh yeah, and we want to do sudo first. If you don't do sudo, you'll end up on the forums complaining that stuff doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's happened. <laughs> Platform, EGLFB. And uh, hopefully the Amiga jar has like a main something. It preloader. Okay, so that was the first issue. Amiga preloader, Amiga preloader not found. That's your... Um this is kind of a turn. Oh, oh, you know what? It, you know what it might be. So, give me the main class that should get called, and I'll add it on the class path instead. Uh, UI geeks. <laughs> dot amiga. Dot demo one. Okay, because what it might have been doing is it might have been trying. Oh, but it's com, right? Com UI geeks. Sure. No. Sure. Come here, geeks. What happened? <laughs> that was painful. But I think this, uh, you're not on a graphical terminal now, right? Yeah, so I want to, well, I want to run it on... Um, For real. But it should start up at least. <coughs> JavaFX.platform. All right, anyway, let's see if we can get it to start up first, and then I'll deal with one error yep. at a time. So com dot UI geeks. No class def found JavaFX. Okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna add in javafxrt.jar from the JavaFX directory. Opt JDK18 uh, Java JRE JRE. No, yeah, JRE lib. JFXRT. And I thought displacement map were difficult. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is. Yeah. Java effects. Oh, that's a good one. That's an interesting one. Uh, okay, colon, not semicolon. Oops. Okay, so now we're Doing something. Doing something. That's good. So to see the output, now we swap back over to our Pi out. Oh. Well, well. It's really fast on here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this might not be optimized for this hardware. I don't know. For anything. <laughs> well, there's um, two possibilities here. 
So one is um, you were doing a lot of um, you were doing a lot of things where you were doing um, transformations, like sure. um, pixel transformations. Yes. Those might not be optimized no. on the um, EGL frame buffer pipeline. The other possibility is <coughs> I'm using this capture device to capture the Pi and send it to the computer, and then the computer is then encoding it for online streaming. So I don't actually know what the frame rate going through all this hardware is, but I assume it's not very fast. So we're probably losing both for the stream because of I don't have a direct um, HDMI out to a monitor, and also perhaps the JavaFX program on Pi. But we have to test yes. by hooking a monitor up and seeing what the actual, oh, well, we have a monitor. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, you're kind of spoiled when you're working on a computer like this because everything is fast, basically. So you don't have to care about optimizing things. Yeah. So I guess here, that's a bit more important. <laughs> so what but I should do is I should get you guys a pie so you can optimize your program yes, for it. Yes, definitely. Yep. Night maybe, maybe that's what it should be, the, the pie demo contest? That's Java a bit Fx more, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, it raises the challenge a little. Definitely. It's uh, much more of a challenge. And it, then you actually have to be a bit creative and work hard. I mean, half of the... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, half of the... Uh, or a big part of what made this so hard back in the days was that the hardware wasn't that powerful. You have to know... You had to know all these assembler tricks to shift memory around and so on. So maybe... I mean, maybe that's... Maybe uh, creating a graphical demo on a Pi is as close as we'll get to what people did back in the days. Yeah. Yeah, so more pie to the people. <laughs> we need a pie. So you could have done the transformations with the graphics card and it would probably be a lot nicer. Yeah, rather than <coughs> doing it, yeah, I assume that hits the CPU the way you've done them. Yeah, because you can also have differences, I guess. On this board, you have a certain, um, certain set of OpenGL hardware accelerated, I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have everything hardware accelerated here and not everything yeah, there. Yeah, so you have to do stuff in software. And the then pipeline you're and the optimizations are entirely different on the pod yeah. than they are. So and it's an early access as well. So I, I think some folks had questions they were trying to, oh. to ask. So just shout it out. Do you need to, or can you run it on a, a window manager as well? OK, questions if you can run window manager. Um, yeah. On the Pi. Yeah, exactly. And actually, you, you can. The, um, the default Pi distribution will start Windows. Well, you can choose whether it starts X Windows or not. And they don't run full GNOME. They run a lighter weight window manager. But it has a full menu and windowing system and all that stuff on there. So it's, it's quite functional. Can you run Java Epics as well? Design? Run? Java Epics. We just did. Oh, okay. Can you run? Okay. The question is, you can, can you run JavaFX inside of the window manager? So there um, is a GTK pipeline, which um, the team has tested internally, but it's not in the early access because it's well, not as fast as the EGL pipeline, and also they haven't done as much testing on it. So I'm not sure what the plans are for releasing the um, GTK pipeline, but it's possible. That's actually for the lab we did in um, Iceland. That's what we used was the um, VNC into X windows using the GTK pipeline. Cool. Yeah, I'm a bit confused here, but does it run a generic Linux distribution or is it something specialized? You're saying you're a subset of the open GL. All right. So the question the question was whether it runs a full Linux distribution or not, and about the OpenGL support. Um, so, what else? All right. So, for the Linux distribution, it uses um, Debian Linux, um, and there are special drivers and some special things which they've done in that distribution, but it's in, an, it's in a repo and it's public and you can download and then update off of the, the repo using the standard um, apt-get and, and 
aptitude tools. Um, there's no Ubuntu distribution because the ARM uses a V6 rather than a V7 processor, and Ubuntu didn't want to backport to V6, although they might, they might change and create a, a V6 port since the Raspberry Pi is so popular. Um, for the OpenGL stuff, the, the hardware uses a PowerVR um, processor for the GPU. And really, the, the support for optimization is more on the JavaFX side. So what acceleration we're putting into the graphics pipeline to take advantage of the um, EGL pipeline, rather than support of the graphics chip, whatever the power VR su chip supports, which is going to be the full EGL spec, supposedly, should, should work. Um, you just have to tune it for the, the GPU hardware to get the best performance. And we found this when we were doing the DevOx um, demonstrations on the screen. So it was running at 1920 by 1080, and we were able to get a pretty good frame rate. I think we were up in definitely above 30. I think we got it at 60 frames per second at some points. Cool. But to, to do that, we had to be careful about the size of textures that we were using because it has limited memory in the GPU. So if you, if you cache images which are too big or if you do certain things, you, you tend to... Um, you tend to blow the GPU and get weird artifacting or stuff, bad stuff happens. Um, so they fixed some bugs in JavaFX code as a result of the work we did on the demos. Cool. There's a rather memory uh, effect. It's a, it doesn't, it's, it's, a, it's a lack of memory rather than the, the transportation of memory between the GPU and the... Yeah, I mean, I, so, there's things to do with texture sizes and what optimizations, what graphics optimizations are, are faster on different GPU sets. And the, um, the team working on this stuff knows a lot more about it than I do, but I, I know we broke it for them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, we, we forgot to... Oh, stickers. Yeah, can you, can you um, help me out here because <laughs> sure. I, I'm incapable of... Is it really a power VR say already for some Broadcom? It's a Broadcom. But is it their design? Oh, oh, okay. Maybe I'm. All right. Well, let's get you. Let's get you guys. Because I was I was looking at this this morning to get the right information for my. Um, usually, the power VR chips are quite powerful. The right information. Yeah, power VR is used in um, in the Apple devices, yeah. iPads, and iPhones. It uses a Broadcom chipset, but the graphics was different um, for the for the Raspberry Pi. So let me let me find out what the um, video video core. That's that's what it is. So it's not a power VR. It's a video core. So it's the Broadcom chip, and it's a video core for. Yeah, no, we, they're, they're specifically, I mean, it's a general distribution, which, you know, in the future we'll work on a whole bunch of different embedded ARM-based platforms, but they're, they're specifically um, testing with and doing things to make sure that Raspberry Pi works really well. So the question was whether, whether it's just Raspberry Pi support. Yeah, no, so it's very it's very similar to what we do on desktop for JavaFX as well. Um, so to support different graphics cards for hardware acceleration in the Prism pipeline, they need to test and make optimizations and essentially different cases based upon your um, your hardware to get the best performance. But that's also a limitation in OpenGL ES that you, it has to be a power of two to be able to to upload it to the graphics chip. Yeah. That, that's yeah. an OpenGL in general, isn't it? No, no, not on desktop. Really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so somebody here who knows more about GPU than the rest of us. Yeah. Just, <laughs> you just accept it. Like, yeah, okay. okay. You, you earned your sticker. But uh, <laughs> it will always be faster if you use the code. Yeah. But you also used uh, 
the Panda board, right? For the Java One uh, kiosks. I mean, not yeah, you personally. Yeah, we, but we, yeah, I was helping Jasper and Rich with the yeah. cool with the kiosk code yeah. as well. Because that that was not the Raspberry Pi, right? Yeah. So we used um, well more show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this guy, <laughs> slightly larger than the Raspberry Pi, um, but it uses the same or similar chipset. It uses an ARM V7 processor. This is the Panda board. And he is more powerful graphics, well, processor-wise. That's a Power VR. This is Power VR? Yeah. OK, all right, thanks. <laughs> And this uses a power of your <laughs> 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 really? So you guys aren't mic'd, so I can look good by repeating what you said. <coughs> so this uses a power of VR graphics. Really? Oh. Chipset. And <laughs> it's what <laughs> <laughs> it's what we were using for the um, kiosk demo. We had the schedule or hooked up to a touch screen. And then this was driving it off of JavaFX, talking to backend servers to pull the schedule back. And then you could interact with the schedule um, running on this hooked up to a touch screen. Which was a really cool demo, I think, of embedded JavaFX. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a lot of fun to, to build. Um, Jim, Jim Weaver and I assisted, but um, we were dwarfed by the, the graphics prowess of Jasper. And Who isn't? I mean. And Rich, at some point, Richard Bear, the chief architect for JavaFX, he just he rewrote the whole app and like made it all like pretty and clean and <laughs> <laughs> performant. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, those guys are monsters. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, we've we've I think we've overrun our welcome here at Foo Cafe. I think they're going to close the doors on us. Probably not, but um, <laughs> maybe people have people other to things home. to do. <laughs> But thanks a lot for, for coming out for the <coughs> night hacking session. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you. And uh, before, oh yeah, we actually have something for you. We've been thinking. Yes. <laughs> That's it. We've been thinking. <laughs> no, <laughs> we, you've been uh, traveling around the world, and I know that you, you, you've been away from your family for four days now. <laughs> but you're going to be away for like a week. Oh, you mean my relatives who live in the Bay Area. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, <laughs> and I, I, have, I have a wife who I visit occasionally. Yeah. yeah. And some kids. And yeah. you have a kid and you have a motorcycle. Yeah. And so and we, we know what's more, most important wife, kids, and mot motorcycles. Right? <laughs> there, there's kind of so a hierarchy. <clears throat> this is our way of th saying thank you for coming. And, and thanks for having us. And we know your priorities a chocolate motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> And it's for real. You can eat this. It. Supposedly, yeah. it's actually good chocolate as well. It's not no, just this, a gimmick. This actually, this is really well done. This looks not too far from the one I was riding on my night hacking tour. It looks like a BMW. Nice. Yeah, we buy quality stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. right. Thank you. And yeah. thank you guys for, you. for being on the stream. Thank you. Right. Thanks. <laughs>